Good morning. Andy, I didn't hear you say good morning. Welcome to worship at Glebe St. James United Church in downtown Ottawa on Sunday, March the 13th, 2022, the second Sunday of Lent. And for those of you who are tuning in near the end of the service, welcome to Daylight Savings Time. We hope you find joy and inspiration with us this morning. My name is Eric Dormer, and I'm a member of the choir, the worship committee, and the AV team. As we meet and throughout the week, we remember in gratitude the Algonquin peoples on whose traditional unceded land our sanctuary stands. We acknowledge their story and their stewardship of the land, water, plants, and animals through many generations. Thank you, Miigwech. We honor the legacy of the Algonquin peoples by growing food and medicines in our garden, by working to make our space environmentally sustainable, and by supporting social justice issues, especially those relating to Indigenous persons. The bulletin for today's worship service can be found on the Glebe St. James website. On the website, you can also find the bullet, a link to this week's announcements and a donate button to make your offering. Your financial offerings help with the work of our church in the community, as well as supporting our partners and the live streaming of our worship services. Glebe St. James is an affirming community of faith in the United Church of Canada. Everyone in their gender, race, ethnicity, abilities and sexual orientation is welcome and celebrated for our worship. Yes, every one of you, and you, and you, and you. Like the early Christians, most of us are still worshiping from our homes today. If you're at home alone, or with family or friends, take a moment to create a worship space around you. Light a candle, as we will be doing in a moment. Quiet your mind. Know that you are not alone. A few church activity updates now. Our virtual, non-hybrid, non-caloric coffee hour is back today at the regular on-off time of 1 p.m. Coffee hour is a chance to catch up with our church family and make new ones. The virtual link is in the bulletins. The Women's Intergenerational Group, or WIG, is meeting next Sunday, March the 20th. The topic is bringing LGBTQ refugees to safety. Eve Brunette, the coordinator for two refugee sponsorship groups in Ottawa, Rainbow New Beginnings and Everyone's Sister, will present, and Wendy Bergeron will facilitate. The Zoom line will open at 12 noon, and the meeting runs from 12.30 to 2 p.m. As well, next week, Judy will be hosting a labyrinth from 3 to 5 p.m. Come and see what new quilt she's going to be working on. COVID protocols are in place. You must be double vaccinated and appropriate face coverings must be worn while in the building. The sign-in book and hand sanitizer are available outside the church office door. Our next Zoom hymn sing is coming up in two weeks. Two weeks, January 27th. Please mark your calendars. March. I don't know what I said, but thank you. I think I can read. Do you have a favorite hymn you would like to hear? You can send hymn suggestions to Barb Monroe for her to add to the list. Or Jennifer in the office, because Jennifer knows everybody, and she'll send your, just, your suggestions along to Barb. Liz Elton has asked me to send a big thank you out to those folks who added their names to the scripture readers list. Actually, she asked last week, but the congregational annual meeting announcement by Pam blew her off the map. She didn't provide me with the list of names, but it would probably be too long to read out anyway. So to find out who you are, keep watching every Sunday morning until June. I am pleased to announce we have had a brave new Glebe St. James member, hopefully, step up to take the second to last breakfast burrito. <laughs> so, <laughs> 
Here is the one and only last burrito waiting for the last volunteer brave enough to come on as part of the spring 2022 cohort. Organic, flash frozen, ready to be placed in your hand when you present it for serving. You better bring your own glove. Last but not least, the, the last Reverend George Hospital report, maybe? George sounded tired when I called him on Friday. He hasn't been speak, sleeping well this past week. But the good news is he's planning on leaving the Queensway Carlton Active Hospital for an assisted living facility in Stittsville next Tuesday. He said it has everything. Well, he wasn't too sure about whether it's a golf course or not. Might be the last week to use the phone number on the screen. Then we get to change it again. There are many more announcements about church-related activities in our, on, in our slides at the end of the service, the e-update message, and on our website. The service this morning will be led by our pastoral care intern, Susan Toller. Nice to see you back at the lectern, Susan. Our Minister of Music, James Caswell, will lead us in music, along with Pam, Julia, special treat today, Jim, Crystal, David, Brad, and Liz but not me. Kylie, Karen, Taylor, and I are at the AV controls. And now, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship on this second Sunday of Lent. everyone. It's so nice to see some people in the pews. I'm replacing Teresa this morning <clears throat> and I'm happy to share this time of worship with you and I really appreciated um, Eric's sense of humor. It helps us all uh, <laughs> loosen up and warm up in the morning. Thanks Eric. Please join me in the call to worship. If God is a hen, if God is a table, have a seat. If God is a house, we are safe from the storm. If God is a party, we're invited to dance. If God is a melody, our names are our lyrics. If this is God's house, then all are welcomed, all are loved, all belong. Let, Let us, us worship, worship God. God. In this season of Lent, we light this candle to remind us of God's light shining in the darkness. May we carry this light of hope, peace, and justice to the world around us every day. Let us pray. 
Holy One, you told us that you came that we might have life and have it to the fullest. And we crave that expanse of life, that life overflowing with beauty, drenched in gratitude and full to the brim with meaningful relationships. We crave space to revel in your goodness, to forgive and be forgiven without limit. We are going to trust in the expanse of life that you dream for us. We're trusting in you, God, for life, love, and faith, full to the brim. Amen. Family of faith, we come to confession not to wallow in our guilt. Instead, we come to confession because we know that change starts with being honest. So, in a desire to grow and change, let us pray to a God who loves us like a mother hen. Let us confess our failings together. When the Pharisees tried to stop Jesus, Jesus said, I will keep on. I will keep on healing. I will keep on teaching. I will keep on preaching. I will keep on flipping the tables of injustice. I will keep on treating every person like a child of God. I will keep on believing that this world can change. I will keep on and keep on and keep on until God's promise is made. For forgive us, God, for the, for the times when we stop. Amen. Family of faith, because Jesus' love just keeps going, we can trust that love and grace exists for us. So rest in this good news. Forgive, forgive us, God for the times when we stop.
and out. Dear God, help us keep our promises just like you did with Abraham and Sarah. Help us to trust you even when things seem impossible. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke 13, verses 31 to 35. Just then, some Pharisees came up and said, Run for your life! Herod's got your number. He's out to kill you. Jesus said, Tell that fox that I've no time for him right now. Today and tomorrow, I'm busy clearing out the demons and healing the sick. The third day, I'm wrapping things up. Besides, it's not proper for a prophet to come to a bad end outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, killer of prophets, abusers of the messengers of God. How often I've longed to gather your children, gather your children like a hen, her brood safe under her wings. But you refused and turned away, and now it's too late. You won't see me again until the day you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of God. This is a reading from our ancestors in faith.
That was really beautiful, Julia. Thank you. And James, too. He really moved us this morning. Holy God, this life of ours is full to the brim. Our days are overflowing with emails and to-do lists, schedules and notifications, assignments and deadlines. We wake up feeling behind and we go to sleep worrying about tomorrow. And we know there has to be more than this. So we pray. Bend down and show us the way. Leave breadcrumbs in the street and point us toward awe and wonder. Guide us to intimacy and trust. Gift us with laughter that will make us cry and hope that will make us feel alive. We want a new kind of full to the brim. Show us the way. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. One moonlit night, a fox was prowling about a farmer's chicken coop and saw a hen roosting high up beyond his reach. Good news, good news, he cried. Why, what is that, said the hen. King Lion has declared a universal truce. No beast may hurt a bird henceforth, but all shall dwell together in brotherly friendship. Why, that is good news, said Hen. And there I see someone coming, with whom we can share the good tidings. And so saying, she craned her neck forward and looked far off. What is it you see, said the fox? It's only my master's dog that's coming towards us. What? Going so soon? She continued as the fox began to turn away. Will you not stop and congratulate the dog on the reign of universal peace? I would gladly do so, said the dog, the fox, sorry. But I fear he may not have heard of King Lion's decree. What do you think is the moral of Aesop's fable? The answer seems to be that cunning often outwits itself. There are parallels between this fable and our gospel story today. Herod is the fox, Jesus the hen, perhaps John the Baptist is the dog, and King Lion is God, of course. Although the fox lied to the hen about King Lion's decree of universal peace, we know a different story from God. The truth is, that the kingdom of God is at hand and is present in deep and surprising ways. How often do we use the term mother hen when we refer to a person who is especially nurturing and protective of those they love? What an interesting metaphor Jesus uses in the gospel reading. God trying to gather God's children together just as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. A hen is probably not the first thing that comes to mind when we think of a protective animal. We would sooner imagine a lion or a, first beard of, sorry, a fierce bird of prey, something with fangs or talons. Yet the lowly chicken is the image that Jesus chooses to demonstrate the relationship between God and us. God, the mother hen, calls us to the safety of the nest, underneath those downy wings, behind the heart that beats beneath her vulnerable breast. There's power in this image. Power tied to Abraham's covenant with God and power tied with strength in vulnerability and with relationship. Today, fear is our fuel. Fear of those who are different, fear of death, fear of our own shortcomings, and fear that the things we value will be taken away from us. In response, we write contracts, contracts for services, 
contracts for jobs, prenuptial contracts, and as wonderful and helpful as wills can be, they too are contracts to make sure the people and things we care about will be valued. Contracts are about legal protection within relationships. This is where they differ from a covenant, especially a covenant with God. When Abraham and God made a covenant, they were executing an ancient practice. A covenant ratified in blood back then was all encompassing. If you were to make a covenant with your best friend today, it would mean that everything, but the, everything that belonged to them also belonged to you and vice versa. If your best friend happened to have a mansion and a heap of creditors hounding them, then guess what? You've got that too. A contract would protect you from the bad, but a covenant guarantees that you are in relationship and if one goes down, you both go. On the flip side, that also means if one succeeds, so does the other. God has established covenants with a variety of people and under a variety of circumstances. With Noah, the rainbow promising that God would never again destroy the earth with a flood. With Abraham, through animal sacrifice, and later as Abraham through circumcision. With Mary, through the blood that came with birthing Jesus, and with Jesus himself, who sets his face to Jerusalem so his blood can become another tie that binds us. Jesus knew his identity as a prophet and the son of God. He tells the Pharisees, Go and tell that fox, Herod, for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jesus knows the stakes of being what he is, and yet, he follows God's call to him. He sees the role of God as one of a mother hen, gathering her brood under her protective wings, safe from the ravages of the foxes of life. In Luke's time, that meant not just Jerusalem or Israel, but the Gentiles as well. Like the Pharisees and Sadducees that Jesus encounters, we are often not willing to be gathered in with people that are not like us. Instead, we take our chances elsewhere. We think we are truly free, but instead are even more at risk and vulnerable to the sly seductions of the foxes that are among us. If you are familiar with what happens when a fox gets into a hen house, then you know that most times the mother hen herds her chicks under her wings for protection and bears her breast so that the fox must kill her first before it can get to her little chicks. It's the only defense she has. Later, there will be a flutter of feathers and motherless chicks running around, but at least they are alive, though their mother may be dead. They are given the chance to live. This is the image that Jesus chose to bring to us. Our covenant with God means that everything of God is also ours, even Jesus, God's only son. The season of Lent is a time of repentance and a time to consider what it means to be in covenant with a vulnerable God. We learn that faith grows through use. 
The more we encounter our vulnerable God, the more we understand the strength of our own vulnerability. We must choose to live this faith every day. Lent reminds us exactly how vulnerable and human we are in this world. We are called to something more than living for ourselves and satisfying our contracts. We are called to be the little chicks that lead the way to our mother hen, our God. But who else needs to be sheltered underneath God's wings? Refugees? The homeless? Those living with mental, emotional, or physical limitations? And what is our role in this matter? How do we make room under those beautiful wings of protection? How do we extend Jesus' mothering, sheltering wings in situations of abuse or hate crimes? Who would we consider worthy of shelter? Or like Jesus, can we extend shelter to all of Jerusalem? Note that those whom Jesus wanted to shelter under his mothering wing refused the invitation. In our baptism, we are marked by the cross of Christ and sealed by the Holy Spirit as Christ's own forever. We are charged with an imperative call to love like that mother hen who opens her wings wide and exposes her heart to the foxes of the world in the hope that our loved ones may live in the light of our vulnerability. Call to love like someone who is in covenant with God. A fierce and trusting love that encompasses all that which God possesses. When we live this way, we will know the reign of universal peace described in this Franciscan blessing. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer. From pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. May God bless you, all of you, with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. May the peace of God and the God of peace be with you forevermore. Amen.
Life is a blessing from the divine creator. As disciples, we are encouraged to be the words and actions of the divine. So let us come to offer our talents, our skills, and our very being as an offering to do God's work in the world. We bring our gifts to you, O God, in love and expectation. In expectation, because your blessing will increase these gifts manyfold. Amen. Today, we pray with a consciousness that Jesus was not able to prevent the brutal end to his own journey. We know that those who plotted and threatened to kill him prevailed. Enable us as we try to understand the brutality and injustice of hate crimes and war to understand the journey Jesus walked. God, it may be too much for us to grasp the mother hen love of Jesus, that one so frail, vulnerable, and poor, facing threats to his own life, could extend a warm, secure, and loving wing to those who threatened him. Help us to make space under Christ's wings for others who are vulnerable and need care, and we pray singing. us under that same shelter. Lenten God, open our eyes to see, understand, and protest the trauma for those who lie with threats always unwarranted, unfair, unjustified, and unacceptable. Give us the courage to speak prophetically, even when it means we ourselves may be threatened. And we pray, singing.
Lent in God, as we step forward with humble feet, in the hope that we may make a gentle word carry far, firmly resolved to speak into abuse and harassment with calm, honest resolution. Help us recognize we are all vulnerable chicks. In need of similar care, we pray, singing. petitions we offer to you, Holy One, as well as the prayers etched on our hearts as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Mother and Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for and ever and ever. Amen.
May you overflow with love for those around you. And may you be effusive with hope and quick to point out joy. And in all your living and breathing and being, may you find yourself full to the brim with God's Holy Spirit. And may it change your life. Remember, dear ones, you are never alone. For you go with God, the source of love. Jesus, the love incarnate, and the Holy Spirit, love's promise and power. And let the people say, Amen. Amen.